Hey everyone, how you doing out there? <laughs> happy ha happy uh, Thanksgiving, folks. I almost said Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. see, uh, Lori's actually supporting. She's out there watching the commercial. And it says, says 26 more seconds in the next commercial. Now, usually what I do in the long commercials, and I'll be sh doing a video on this uh, maybe tomorrow or uh, the day after Thanksgiving uh, about how you, easy you just duplicate the tab and skip it on the, on the duplicate and let the original one just keep on playing the stuff. All righty. So, <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, Let's see. Max in the house goes blue healer. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So, all right. We got Michael in here. Uh, Prairie Rider, which is Lori. And scroll on down here. Come on. Scroll. Thank you. There we go. Uh, Courtney's in here. Everyone's chit chatting back and forth. Uh, Jehodak Maccabeus at Maccabeus Off Grid and Everyday Survival. Blue Healer's here. And Lori's, uh, Lori's running both here. She's running hers and uh, she's running Prairie Rider and uh, Lori J. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right, guys and everyone, let's see. All right, let me check one more thing out here before we start jumping around here. All right, so um, I was like, I was talking to Al beforehand before we start uh, kicked the live off. I was thinking of going several different ways with this. Yep. Hey, Conrad Homestead. And hey, Conrad. one of the things, you know, I think I'm going to try to do both because both need to be a t a, a, um, attention drawn to. The first part of it, we're going to talk about uh, the food, the stress, and the politics. You know, things that uh, the the sort of sort of the um, that can be the the bad side of it. And then we're going to talk about recipes and favorite recipes from when we were kids and favorite recipes now, how things have changed. So let me flip this up here like this. And that's right. family uh, politics, folks, not the regular kind. <laughs> yeah. Well, because the regular kind should be 100% uh, taboo because not everybody in the family thinks the same way. Hey, Tibor. Rustic Traditions Homestead, and okay, those are who they are. so. Let's uh, let's check out the uh, what can be what can be the funny side, and it's a lot of time causes a lot of stress here. Let's so let's go ahead. The food, the food. All right, so the food. What's usually bad about the food? Ah, oh, I burnt it. Whatever in heck that's supposed to be. They burnt it, and then oh no. They burnt the Brussels sprouts and whatever was supposed to be in there with them. <laughs> okay. So, and then, of course, you know, you know, this one I just thought was plain funny because she's not paying attention to what's cooking. Everything's going up in flames, and then she's going to complain. And then, of course, there's the dreaded, I burnt the turkey. And I've only seen this happen not really, not this bad. We just got slightly overdone. I've only seen it happen twice all my life. And we're uh, not mentioning the deep fried turkey this time. It's way too hilarious. Trust us. Oh yeah, some of those are, there are some really good videos. In fact, there's some good videos actually out there by Underwriters Laboratory on that. But oh no, I was going to make bread and I didn't know how to mix it right. <laughs> So part of the uh, on one side, you can see it's not even raising down here, and they got all the yeast up in the second part. Yeah, uh -huh. I've seen a few that have turned out like that. And then, of course, they uh, overstuffed the uh, cinnamon rolls in there, and they just expanded and filled up the tray and on out. And whatever they were trying to make here in, in the muffin uh, paper, papers, it boiled over and then collapsed. <laughs> God, that's horrifying. Yeah. That's why I do cooking for my church. Yeah. And then, oh, I'm just going to grab that pan without the gloves on. And, oh, ow, it's hot. I dropped the turkey on the floor. 
And if you have any large dogs in the house, guess where the turkey is now? Outside. <laughs> With four or five dogs eating your turkey dinner. Then you have yeah. to call Pizza Hut. Now, the one I couldn't get a, a photo for, I was I was trying to search, you know, trying to get some, some photos that would show stuff where the turkey was un, was still frozen when they were put it in the oven. And they cut, <laughs> you go to cut into it, you can see burnt on the outside and raw down in the bottom where it was still frozen. That is a problem that's happened to too many people where they, oh, I'm going to pull the frozen turkey out the day before. And folks, never put a frozen turkey into a boiling vat. A peanut oil. Yeah. Rule one, always, unless you have good fire insurance. Let's see. What we got here? We got a uh, car. Uh, says, it'll wash off. It's good. And <laughs> Courtney said, Pizza Hut. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Conrad Homestead, if you're going to be trying to deep fry this year, first thing you need to do before you even start heating up the oil, take a good tight uh, trash bag, put it around the turkey. Put it in the pot and fill the oil up to the proper level so it doesn't overflow. You want it to, so it'll just cover the turkey but not overflow. Then you take the turkey back out, shake it, you know, all the oil off inside, take it off, throw the out of that garbage bag away. That way you have the right amount of um, oil in the pan and it's not going to be when you put the turkey in, it doesn't overflow. That is the biggest cause of uh, turkey fryer fires is that they, uh, Fill it too much and it overflows onto the flames of the propane. Right. And the second thing on the turkey thing, you have to have the proper lit rig to lower the turkey into the deep fryer. If yeah. you don't have it and do like my neighbor did and he's spending Thanksgiving with a burnt out garage, uh, he said, I'll just chuck the turkey in it. So what yeah. happens if you chuck turkey in a boiling vat of peanut oil? <laughs> Yeah, it overflows, either overflows or splashes out and causes a fire. Right. All right, now I'm not sure what they were trying to make with this one, but this was under the photos when I was Googling it, um, Thanksgiving dinner failures. So whatever they're trying to make here, it did not cook right. All right, let's go on to the next one here. And then, of course, this one here uh, looked like some sort of uh, a cobbler cake of some sort overflowed. and yeah. Could be, yeah, it looks like it. All right, now the stress. The stress, we've already saw some of what causes the stress. But what are other things that will cause the stress you got to deal with coming on Thanksgiving? Okay, you still got doing some uh, fires. You get the fire going, <laughs> that's going to stress you out. Oops, I forgot to put the, the lid on the blender right. <laughs> more fires, more fires. I've seen a lot of kitchen fires and people don't stop, stop stupid. The politics, the family politics. What happens that causes something? Someone brings up something that they shouldn't bring up during the dinner, before the dinner, after dinner, whatever. Uh, someone's really enjoying it, and they're really, you know, uh, they're going back for seconds, and someone else makes the comment, oh, look who's really hungry here, or makes some stupid comment and, you know, gets someone pissed off. Or they actually bring up real politics. Right. And other members of the family are not of the same political party they are. So, no or they just start, you know, just someone just says something wrong and everybody's like, seriously, really? You're going to say that? I got to say hello to Albany Mountain Homestead. Hey. She had McDonald's for Thanksgiving dinner. And Jay's in the house. Hey, Jay. All right. And then, uh, yeah, somebody makes a stop, just says, pushes the wrong, other person's wrong button. It's like, I can't believe you said that. And the, and the fight's on. Or somebody smarts off the dad and you don't talk to him that way in my house. Or somebody you know, makes some comment and everybody's uh, ready to draw down. And it's like, uh, I'm eating too much here. Why don't you have some food? And I've actually seen a food fight. And, and the baby's cousins. wondering what what kind of family did I get myself into? <laughs> yeah. And then the one thing I haven't hadn't talked, I didn't put in the in the lead in. The family photos. Oh, we all got to get together and take a picture. Uh, back in the day when I was young, uh, we didn't have digital cameras. 
we had either a Polaroid or we had um, my mom's brand new Minolta, you know, uh, 38. So anyways, yeah. So anyways, we went the, you get pictures like this where this is the only picture you have because you don't have that much film. You can't, you know, reshoot. So somebody in the background back here is uh, sticking his tongue out a little bit. And someone's mad because of what they said for smile, cheese, money, or whatever. Uh, the next one is uh, a couple of them looking down. One doesn't want to be in the photo. He's trying to hide. I've seen a few like that. And then you get the, uh, from back in the 60s, you get the one where they, you know, they only can only take one, maybe two pictures. And, of course, someone goes, oh, I got something in my eye here, and click. Yeah, and then, of course, one kid's trying to stick his head out. That's all. That used to be all the time. We'd have things going on goofy like that. Or you had the person too close, and they're saying, scrunch down, Uncle Al. We can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you know, lean in a little bit, and all, everybody starts moving and shifting, and, you know, yeah, you get weird uh, family photos this way. I think I have a pair of glasses like that. Wait. And then somebody goes, oh, we're going to do theme pictures this year. We're going, we're going to put on, you know, the 3D pictures for the movie we went to last night. Or, hey, we're all going to wear pilgrim hats. <laughs> or, we're going to dress up like uh, the Indians for Thanksgiving. You notice the kids ain't exactly too thrilled. In fact, I don't even think the wife is too thrilled. It looks like it was the dad's idea. So, I think that's the last one I got there. Yeah, that's the last one. Okay, so that took care of the bad part of Thanksgiving and wanted to get out of the way a little bit. But the one I really uh, think uh, would be neat here, guys, everyone out there, if you could type, put in the chat there, list your favorite dish from when you were a kid and your current favorite dish. Oh, ugly sweaters. Oh, yeah, Lori. I've seen a few of those. Hey, everybody get the ugly sweater you can. And everyone's afterwards, everyone's like, the next year, goes, why did we do that last year? <laughs> yeah, because they want to get a step ahead up for Christmas. Yeah. And, folks, make sure it's a lovely, wonderful Thanksgiving dish. Not something experimental like, what's that in the jello? Yeah. So, uh, Basically, so are you guys are thinking, what's your favorite dish? Well, back when I was a kid, my, my, my of course, my favorite is always, is always, always going to be mashed potatoes, unless someone ruins it and puts black pepper in it. Um, but one of the dishes we used to, my, uh, my grandmother and my mother used to make um, just about every year when I was a kid. Um, and at the time, I really wasn't too thrilled about it till I hit uh, my late teens, and then I began to appreciate it. And then they stopped making it because by then, they were tired of everybody not liking it. <laughs> and that was the uh, the carrot and raisin, raisin salad. Yeah. That was, uh, you know, something that they uh, used to make. And, of course, uh, both my grandmother and my mother have passed, so I can't get the recipe for it unless my sister happens to remember the recipe and would be willing to share it. Well, but, you're uh, lucky, Gil. You had it just plain. Guess if you're a growing teenager and everybody was great. Remember during the 60s and 50s, everybody like a thick, put everything in jello? Yeah. Oh, have, that... ha have carrot and raisin salad in lime jello. It looked like something from the creature feature. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, my, um, my sister. And uh, two female cousins got together. I'm not sure who came up with this recipe, but they took turns making it just about every family occasion they could. They made it for Thanksgiving. They made it for Christmas. They made it for New Year's Day. They made it for the 4th of July. It's called green jiggly junk. And basically they take lime jello. Um, I think uh, they, they start out with a quart of uh, whipped cream, you know, you know, and pour the cream in there. Um, a can or two of seven up and they make this stuff and it's it's rather unique looking but they all said tastes great the only exception is I would never eat it because I can't take I can't stand seven up <laughs> sort of like um, 
the the movie um, the Kingsman where uh, Samuel Jackson says, "I see one drop of dr uh, blood, and that's me projectile vomiting." I taste <laughs> a little bit of Seven Up, and that's me projectile vomiting. Hey, Steve, we got Corsair's trainers in the house. Yeah, Corsair's trainers in the house, and also artistic prepper. I think that's Heather. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I have bad memories, folks. Remember. And so um, those are some of the dishes, but I would have to say uh, overall for after me after the main meal, my no, favorite dish is whipped cream with a little pumpkin pie. Right. Uh, that was Virginia as the autistic prepper one, I think. Okay. I have to look at my notes. I have brain damage. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Lori says Virginia down there. Okay. So... Um, just so everybody knows, I timed it at the beginning of this when the countdown timer was going on. We have a 27-second delay from the time I say something to the time you see it. So, and yeah, yeah. So she said not Heather, yeah. Yeah, that's right, uh, Jay. No 7-Up for me. And my mom used to try, uh, she went and tried 7-Up, did not work. She immediately realized, don't give him 7-Up. She tried ginger ale. Almost the same effect. Believe it or not, if she wanted to settle my stomach down, she'd give me a little orange juice. That would work for me. I know I'm weird. And the colder the orange juice, the better. We're all kind of like that. Gil, yeah. we have our, our plus and minuses. Yeah. Usually my fa family get upset when I drink yeah. scotch and bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> Now, one of the other things my mom used to do, which took me a while to get used to, because I'm not a a, um, a squash variety type person, was the uh, the candy yams. Mm. And um, also, the, uh, later on, she actually uh, cooked it a little bit longer before she put the marshmallow stuff on top and got it all down. And when it was the, the, it was a little bit drier and it was a little bit easier to eat and it actually tasted a, a bit better too. But that was something else my mom used to make for Thanksgiving all the time was candy yams. All right, uh, Courtney says she likes green bean casserole. That's pretty good. I've seen that around. And Lori's asking with crispy onions. And oh, um, we're gonna start a little debate here, people. Because I haven't seen anybody mention on the side anything about stuffing. Now, I've heard several ways of doing stuffing in the turkey, in the pan. Um, with um, um, turkey broth or juice and stuff in it. With uh, just plain old, just making up a separate st a dry, uh, semi-dry moist stuffing on, that's on the side that just has a little, has flavoring in it. Um Actually, I think uh, we the couple times they tried doing stuffing in the turkey. It was it it was because it was in the middle of the turkey. It did not cook properly, and uh, so they finally realized, hey, we better cook that separately. And then they were able to start experimenting with it. My cousins, my aunt, my mom, and stuff. And after a while, they got they came up with some pretty decent stuffing on the side that I would eat. Yeah, I'm finicky, and if I eat it, it's pretty dang on good. Unfortunately, if Gil eats it, fine. With my family, I have to watch out. They don't know how to cook stuffing. And I had some weird ingredients in the stuffing. And I say, no oysters, no chestnuts. What the heck is that? No organ meats. Oh, no on yeah. lamb fries. No on internal organs. This is not Scottish food, folks. This is American turkey dinner. If it's cornbread with some onions, I'm happy. But anything else that you put in too much sage or too, too much lamb fries, that's testicles. You know, I had guests that were saying, this is great stuffing. What's these round meatball things? I'm saying, oh, it's lamb. And they say, do you make lamb meatballs? And I said, no. And I told them later. They never came back to the dinner table. Yeah. All right, cornbread stuff has to be done in a separate pan, Tibor says. Home, uh, Albany Homestead, Mountain Homestead says, I'll be making 
Actually, I just throw it up there. Yeah, I forget. I keep forgetting I can do that. So, um, one of the things, though, my um, I'd never seen done until after I got married, and my mother-in-law does it, is for the, um, the turkey, she gets some really thick-cut bacon yeah. and just covers the top of the turkey with the bacon. And let, let's sort of it kind of like baste the turkey a little bit in and, uh, and, uh, bacon juice. But uh, my uh, aunt used to uh, take pineapple rings and toothpick them on top of the turkey. And that was pretty good, too. I mean, all, it's, it's like as soon as it comes out of the oven, all the kids are standing around there looking for a piece of pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> but she serves them, get, hands out pineapples up. They go away and quit bugging her while she finishes uh, getting everything ready. I, uh, I like cornbread stuffing. I'm an old Southern boy, knows how to cook, and knows all mistakes that everybody makes. And uh, yes, uh, it's simple for two persons. Get a, a breast of turkey, wrap it in bacon, cover it with a little bit, a bit of bourbon and honey. And bake it. That's it. You can't go wrong with it. Yeah, I'm looking here at the uh, comments here. Um, yeah, I, I when I most of my life, young life, I did not like stuff, and it wasn't until they decided, my uh, uh, family decided, all right, we're not going to put it in the turkey. You're going to cook it separately, and we're going to try. It. And they worked at it to get come up with a decent tasting stuffing that I would eat. And once and we got to if I liked it, they really liked it. So. And we got to say happy Thanksgiving to David's Mule Train Homestead. Hey, yeah. David. Hey, David. Yep. My fruit salad recipe is on. All right. So, Kaylin String has a fruit salad recipe on her channel. Go check it out, guys. Hi, Kaylin. Kaylin was in the earlier chat. Really good job. I stopped by, say hello. Yeah. All right. Yeah, T Bar, what the reason my aunt did it that way? So, she had you know, the cook rings to give out to the kids to get them out of the kitchen and out of her hair. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, several, several other people say they're not a stuffing eater. Maccabeus, Steve, Lori. So, um, yeah. You know, some people, some people like it. Some people like pecans pies. Some people don't. My wife, Actually, my, my wife likes it. Her dad used to really love it. I am not much of, of a nut person. Well, I'm a southern boy. I eat everything. Yeah. <clears throat> and I like pecan pie. Yeah. And if you've seen um, Anthony's uh, pecan oiler squeezings. Yeah. His, uh, his, yeah. Uh, and yeah. also I answered mm. another one on my email. They do have pecan flour, so you can bake with it, too. Well, uh, Jay, for those that uh, that have ham at uh, have turkey at Thanksgiving and ham at Christmas, yeah, that'd be a great thing for for people to check out for uh, for Christmas time. Uh, and when I was in England, I always have a goose, one yeah. way or another. Lee. Okay, uh, so Courtney says, "Her grandmother make fruit salad, save the fruit." And substitute it for the milk and vanilla. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Yep. And huh, pie. Any pie. Yes, yeah, pie. <laughs> Don't forget sweet potato pie. That's very popular this time of year. Yeah. When it came to uh, on, on Friday, we're going to be talking about what to do with the leftovers and everything. What was interesting by the time I realized what was going on growing up and stuff, I was the uh, the third in line of uh, in our family, and my sister is ten years older than I am. So by the time my younger brother and I came along, they figured out you know what size turkey to get and everything else. The only thing that there was leftovers of was pumpkin pie. Usually two or three leftover pumpkin pies to last for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And so, but pumpkin pie was king in our house. Um, it wasn't until later on we started trying trying the. Uh, um, so after I got married, and my wife brought a pecan pie to it one time, and then we tried uh, an apple pie with vanilla ice cream, of course. 
Oh, uh, Jay, Jay asked a question. I wouldn't waste a shotgun shell on a goose. Neither do I. I have a hatchet. I come up and sneak up behind them and pow. Uh, Christmas dinner. Of course, the uh, okay. one doesn't like it. Lori's saying chocolate pecan pie. Yes, okay. Well, well, interesting thing is my son loves to cook. In fact, he was the uh, quartermaster for several of the Boy Scout NYLT courses, uh, working in the kitchen there with the adults. And um, the last couple of uh, years, he's made cheesecakes right, for Thanksgiving. Uh, vanilla cheesecake, chocolate cheesecake. I think he actually made an orange cheesecake one year. So yeah, he makes cheesecakes for everybody. Make, trying to think, thinking of trying to make the triple pie in one, throw oh, three pie in one one. Ah, pecan, apple, and uh, pumpkin. You could do that. Use the pecan as the crust. Uh, the uh, Pumpkin as the bottom, and then you layer on top apple. I did that about two years ago, and I won at our church uh, cooking contest. They couldn't believe, what kind of crust is it? Pecan. And they're looking at me like, is he nuts? It's not flour. No, it's pecan. Just chop yeah. them up really fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, talking about Anthony's uh, video on his uh, pecan press, or you know, for his press for making pecans. Actually, he got it for uh, originally for sunflower seeds, and he, he planted the wrong type of sunflowers. Right. But um, in the comments section afterwards, uh, there are a lot of comments and stuff, and uh, I think he even mentioned it a little bit in the at the end there of the, of, of about using the um, I forget what now the powder the, the dry stuff that came out of the end of the machine. Uh, what he called it, um, pressing, but basically taking that and because it's all dry and everything, you can crumble it, it's all crumbly up and stuff, and use it as flour, you know, uh, in breads and stuff like that. And let's say hello to how uh, to garden. Hi. Okay, folks, and remember when you use the, the oil press, it's a heat uh, element press, and do not for the sake of god press acorns yeah you get the tanning acid in the oil and your machine is screwed for about six months until you get rid of that tanning flavor trust yeah. me Ugh, got hit all right let's see oh what are you gonna comment uh meal yeah, yeah the meal yeah. all right okay i got it now thanks uh Jehodak. All right. Um, so uh, I've seen on the side chat here hey, people doing ham for Thanksgiving. Um, and of course, turkey. What other meat is anybody out there doing or know that someone is doing for Thanksgiving? Well, let's see. I'm cooking the turkey logs. I got five turkey logs. I'm defrosting and trying to cook tomorrow morning. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Now, a lot of people don't know what the turkey log is. It's all the turkey, white and dark meat, and a three-foot log that I have to shove it into the church oven. Real fun. All right. We got... Uh... Everybody forgot to say turkey, not turkey, uh, deer, like the pilgrims, the Indians and pilgrims, the or, original yeah. first Thanksgiving was deer meat. Yeah, venison, and uh, I'm not even sure if they actually tried shooting down any of the, any of the geese flying over. No, they had ducks. All right. <sighs> Time my husband's grandmother brought the wrong turkey. It was Cajun. Everybody liked it anyways. <laughs> and let's say hello to winging it with Irish Colleen. Hey, Colleen. Welcome. Turkey and, oh, she's doing turkey and honey ham. 
So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Albany had Buffalo. That's good. Mm -hmm. Cool. How many people over prepare their household, them or their wives, were over prepare the amount of food at Thanksgiving? Oh, which reminds me, I uh, there was a meme, uh, meme, whatever you want to call it, meme on uh, a, on Facebook, reminded me to set my scale back ten pounds. <laughs> so. Yeah, I like my turkey a little dry, too. I don't like it when it's all so juicy and stuff. It's just something, I don't know, wrong about it. If it's nice and dry, then you can, then you can use your gravy or, and your other your stuff on top of it. Yeah, I like uh, it a little bit moist myself. But I cook for a lot of people, and I got two boxes of turkey wings and turkey legs. I got to sort, season, and get ready to fry it. Now, I do a lot of cooking. So if I have to cook for a large amount of people, I'm not going to use my oven to fry, to bake turkey wings and drumsticks. I'm putting them in that to a deep fryer, and that will be done in about 30 minutes, and you have a perfect fried turkey leg. I learned that working for Disneyland in um, Florida one summer. Those turkey legs you used to get at Disneyland, you ever been to Disneyland down there in Florida, Disney World? Disney World. Yeah. The, you only, the, time, the only time I was down there in Disney World was in the, was in the early summer back in 74. And then the other time was, oh, after I got married. So it was after, uh, I think it was about uh, 92, we went down and we went down in the beginning of October. All right, and we have uh, turkeys. So, <laughs> yeah, so save, save up your recipes of what uh, you do for all the leftovers and stuff, how you use up the Thanksgiving leftovers for a Friday night special. That's what we were talking about is, yeah, using up all those leftovers, what sort of recipes and stuff will come up then. Uh, make notes, please. Share stuff. Oh, it's really easy, folks, on leftovers. I got seal meal. If you don't eat it, it goes into the freezer for later use. I tried canning stuff, but that didn't work out too well. You ever try to can pumpkin pie? Oh, God, that was horrible. Yeah. It came out pumpkin mush. Yeah. Um, Albany, yeah, the price has gone absolutely too high. Yeah, you know, it's just you know, it it was pretty intense when we went, uh, but we we went for uh, I think it was uh, two weeks. Uh, we went in October. It was a big deal, and yeah, that was the last time we went uh, to uh, to Disney World. And I think when we went to Disneyland twice after that, and it just and let's say hello to Brassard. Hey, Brassard. Yeah, let's see. I keep losing people. Yeah. That's what yeah. happens when you get old and blind, folks. Can't see the turkey to shoot it with a mm -hmm. high powered shotgun. Got a squirrel instead. Try feed five people with that. Uh, now they're all arguing about turkey calls. <laughs> all right. Tibor loves his sweet potato pie. Good. So basically, is everybody ready for Thanksgiving? That's Anthony's I here. In the house. Palmetto prepared is in the house. It's the bewitching hour for the little one, so my hand, his hands are full. All right, you take care of that little girl. Learn how to knit, Anthony. Oh, okay. I sent him a knitting book, one of my old ones. Now, everyone talks about, I just forgot how to pronounce it, 
um, begins with a T. It's the uh, chemical that's in uh, turkey meat that makes everybody sleepy. Tryptophan? Yeah. Guess what? There's more in lettuce than there is in turkey by weight. So eat a, a salad and go to sleep. Eat, eat, a, eat a turkey salad and really go to sleep. Uh, yeah, pumpkin seeds do have pumpkin too. Yeah, all right. So you have a pumpkin seed turkey salad. <laughs> also, I wouldn't be going near the bathroom for about two days either. <laughs> like, uh, all right. Uh, Jay said his uh, Thanksgiving was on Sunday, so he's relaxing. Doesn't have to work either. Cool. I got cleanup to do, and I got to still. Uh, it's like I'm going against the government for something stupid as hell as this. It's like you can't have people eating food. Uh, you close the mission. So what else I got to do? I got all this food I have to give out. Well, Meals and Wheels are going to take care of it. No, you guys close them down. And I'm looking. They're looking at me puzzled. What do you mean they're closed? Look at the state order on the kitchen because it has a group of people cooking food. Yeah. And they say, oh, no, we can't cook for Meals on Wheels. So where the elderly and disabled get a nice hot holiday meal. Yeah. Still mad as hell. I don't want to talk about it. I like cooking better. <laughs> Turkey driving is still buzz driving. <laughs> True. I'm uh, sleepy here. No, officer, I have been drinking. I had double helping of uh, turkeys turkey. with a salad on the side, and I ate a bunch of pumpkin seeds afterwards. <laughs> oh, boy. So, all right, folks. Um, and remember, no heavy booze at Thanksgiving. That's all you need, sleepy drunk people. <laughs> Oh yeah, save it till you get home and you don't have, don't have to drive. Right, you don't want to be that uncle that's lushed out, lying on the car, screaming at the TV, and you got to keep telling him that's not the Chargers. <laughs> yeah. So, everyone, uh, this uh, this is gonna be a little short one here. Don't want to take up too much time, so we're gonna be wrapping up. Friday is going to be um, what to do with leftovers. Um, I'm not sure. Um, she, I know she snuck it in last week. Uh, she should. She's trying to go live uh, every Wednesday now at seven o'clock Mountain Time. Right, isn't that Audra? Audra at Homesteading in Idaho. And if you give me a second here, folks, I will. Uh, Gil, Gil will bring it up. In. And I, I have a small video, a short. Please, everybody, check out my channel. And go check it out. Remember, it's the holidays. And what's the biggest thing that's going on across America that uh, Full Spectrum Survival has been talking about with Brad and Kelly is home invasions. So make sure your home defense is on point. You don't yeah. want to be like one cooking channel cooking with Bird Martinez and get annihilated while you're with, you're with your daughter in the kitchen just cooking and some crazy f person came in. Now, Mario rushed in and tried to defend him. He got a severed ear and a punctured lung. So he's not doing too hot. So yeah. remember, folks, be on point. Be yeah. alert. Yeah, there you are wanna... idiots out there. Yep. Yeah, that's one of the things that has been, uh, I've, I've seen uh, some reports on, too, is the spike on certain types of crime because, Oh, the cops aren't pulling people over as much as they used to. They're trying to avoid getting eating it. So hey, they're not going to respond. We can get away with it. So, anyways, on the lighter note, everyone, hope you all have a great and happy Thanksgiving. Everyone out there, stay happy, stay safe, stay prepared, and we'll see you later. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow night on Homesteading in Idaho's live stream if she does.